observation of mind objects. Dhammanu Pashchana. And how monks? Does a monk abide observing mind objects as mind objects? Here a monk abides observing mind objects as mind objects in respect of the five hindrances. How does he do so? Here monks, if sensual desire is present in himself, a monk knows that it is present. If sensual desire is absent in himself, a monk knows that it is absent. And he knows how unarisen sensual desire comes to arise. So if your mindfulness is low, what will happen? All sensual lust comes in. Because you did not stay on that object of meditation. Mindfulness is remembering to observe the mind. Yeah? Yeah. Little bit your mindfulness was gone, finished. Some craving came up, some aversion came up and you got lost in it. Yeah. He said this, she said this, this happened, that happened. Oh, I want a dress like her, I want a car like his. You got into sensual lust. Get it? Yeah. And he knows how the abandonment of arisen sensual desire comes about to be. I'll stop there. How? How do you abandon? Just relax. Ah, relax and smile. Easier. Cut it off. Cut it off. If you don't cut it off, what happens? It's hovering on the top of you. It's constantly there. To stop this hovering ghost on top of you, what do you have to do? Just relax the meninges, smile, this gets cut off. Yeah, the nutrition to it stops and it withers, withers, withers. And he knows how the non-arising of the abandoned sensual desire in the future will come about. That which I have just abandoned, that which I just, I smiled and I relaxed and it got cut off. I just abandoned the sensual desire. How will this not come back? Consistency, repeat. Keep repeating. Relax, smile, relax, smile, relax, smile. You keep repeating it. So you three SR is the same as smile and relax. Now the same thing in the second paragraph is repeated but with the second hindrance. What was the first hindrance? Tell me. Sensual desire. What is the second hindrance? Ill will. You learnt it as craving and aversion. Same thing, no? There's different words in English. In Sanskrit, Raga Dvesha. If ill will is present in him, a monk knows that it is present. We dot 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 means we go up. If it is absent in him, he knows it is absent. And he knows how unarisen ill will comes to arise. How? When I'm not mindful. And he knows how the abandonment of arisen ill will comes about. How? Relax and, Relax and smile. And he knows how the non-arising of the abandoned ill will in the future will come about. How? Repeat, 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 relax and smile. Be consistent. Very clear? Same is for sloth and torpor. Yeah, don't need to read the same thing. You got it? Yeah. Same is for worry and flurry. <laughs> All rosy words. It's restlessness. Yeah. Sloth and torpor is dullness, dullness, sleepiness. Remember we spoke about that? So sloth and torpor, torpor is dullness and sleepiness. And worry and flurry is restlessness or restlessness and remorse. 
if doubt is present in him a monk knows that it is present if doubt is absent in him he knows that it is absent and he knows how unarisen doubt comes to arise how i was not mindful and he knows how the abandonment of arisen doubt comes about just relax and smile because it is a creation of your own mind yeah anything doubt about yourself oh, i am not good others are so good look at everybody everybody's eyes are closed only my eyes are open oh i am so bad all created by your own mind no one big story you cooked up because you have nothing else to do the saturday afternoon story yeah doubt about yourself doubt about the technique comes up no no satipatthana is not good it is not working oh buddha didn't know what he was talking about <laughs> doubt about the teacher <laughs> huh? doubt the unnecessary it just comes up because of some little thing that you wanted you were craving for an experience and that didn't happen or you didn't want restlessness to come up you didn't want sluggishness and sleepiness to come up but it came up so you start blaming other things Are you seeing this one follows the other and you are suffering over there yeah why because you did not relax and smile that's why yeah how to abandon this party relax and smile relax the meninges and smile okay it seems like such a simple thing no and how it's working tell me yeah amazing no okay inside so he abides observing mind objects as mind objects internally and externally and both internally and externally he abides observing arising phenomena in mind objects and vanishing phenomena in mind objects and both arising phenomena and vanishing phenomena in mind objects or else mindfulness that there are mind objects are you aware when there is hatred or ill will oh there is hatred right now there is just ill will right now let me not react do you remind yourself yeah good is present just to the extent necessary for knowledge and awareness bas you don't start talking to yourself somebody came and told me that in their mind they are talking to me that is also self talk because you are not there actually. yes <laughs> i'm not there i already gave you the instruction you are intelligent enough you have already absorbed the instruction it happened to me today i told you mm, yeah <laughs> justify it right no, yeah it's extra reason so it's okay to talk no 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 no, no. <laughs> Now you become more sincere. You don't need to talk to me in your head. Yeah, one instruction echoes from the past. That's fine. That's a first thought. You can't stop the first thought. It comes. You just relax, smile. You go back to your observing sensation. It'll go away. You don't start talking to the ekta in your head now. Your one-on-one -on -one is already going on in your head. That's not meditation. Can you stop doing that, please? yeah if you're doing that yeah. so just observe mind objects as mind objects don't get lost in story clear and he abides detached not grasping at anything in the world and that monks is how a monk abides observing mind objects as mind objects in respect of the five hindrances very clear the five hindrances yeah okay now we'll do the five aggregates again monks a monk abides contemplating mind objects as mind objects in respect of the five aggregates of grasping what are the five aggregates of grasping rupa vinyana sanya vedana and sankhara in english form name yeah form consciousness perception feeling and impressions 
or volitional formations. In the Kubodi's language, what are they called? Five, uh, five aggregates of clinging in that book. In this book, five aggregates of grasping. Same thing, different language. How does he do so? Here among things, such is form, such the arising of form, such the disappearance of form, such is feeling, such the arising of feeling, such the disappearance of feeling, such is perception, such the arising of perception, such the disappearance of perception, such are the mental formations. In Bhikkhu Bodhi's language, volitional formations. In simple English, thoughts. Such the arising of mental formations. Such the disappearance of the mental formations. Such is consciousness. Such the arising of consciousness. Such the disappearance of consciousness. This meaning of arising, disappearance, arising, disappearance, arising, disappearance. Ah, did you notice that? They come and go. Have you become aware in Satipatthana now that nothing is permanent? A, a particular thought comes up, it goes. Yeah. In that thought, if there is lots of judging, labeling, what kind of a thought is it? What kind of an aggregate? It is sanya, perception. Yeah. If it is just observing, the mind is quiet. It's not saying anything, it's just observing. What is it? Vinyana. Yeah, if it comes up and it, there's a nice feeling, Vedana. Vedana, yeah, and then you say, I like this feeling. What happens immediately? Sankhara. Got it? So it's easier to cut this chain in Vinyana level in meditation, but in reality, it goes to the sensation. Vedana. Beautiful, beautiful. This is called wisdom, this is called insight. It came from her. What did she say? In meditation, it is easier to cut it at the vinyana level. Just observe. I'm a sakshi. I'm a sakshi. I'm a witness. Yeah. So she said, it's very easy to do this at the meditation level. But the moment eyes open and you're out and about, it's so difficult. No, it goes immediately to feeling. And then say, I like this. I don't like this. You notice it only after you've reacted. Sometimes you don't notice that also. Right? Very good observation. Okay. Insight. So he abides observing mind objects as mind objects internally and externally and both internally and externally. And he observes arising phenomena in the mind objects and vanishing phenomena in the mind objects and the rising phenomena and vanishing phenomena in the mind objects. And he abides detached, not grasping at anything in the world. And that monks is how a monk abides observing mind objects as mind objects in respect of the five aggregates of grasping. The six internal and external sense bases. Again, monks, a monk abides observing mind objects as mind objects in respect of the six internal and external sense bases. How does he do so? Here, a monk knows the eye, knows sight objects. He knows whatever fetter arises dependent on the two. What is a sight object? Form. Yeah, so he knows the eye and he knows the form. Now, what is the meaning of fetter? Fetter is that which chains you, that which binds you. So, what can bind me with the eye and the form? Craving. The craving that I, whatever craving arises or aversion arises on seeing the form. Yeah, so he knows what fetter can arise by the eye and the form.
and he knows how an unarisen fetter comes to arise. How did it arise? No, I was not mindful. That's why the fetter arose. You understood fetter? That which binds me, a craving or an aversion binds me. Yeah. And he knows how the abandonment of an arisen fetter comes about. How? Relax and smile. It goes away. Yeah. And he knows how the non-arising of the abandoned fetter in the future will come about. How? Repeat. Repeat, relax and smile. Be consistent. Same thing for ear and sounds. He knows ear, he knows sounds, he knows the fetter that can arise. Yeah. He knows the nose and he knows the smells and he knows the fetter that can arise and the rest of it. And he knows the tongue and he knows taste and he knows the fetter that can arise because of the two. And then he knows the body and he knows the tangibles and he knows the fetter that can arise because of the two. And he knows the mind and knows mind objects and he knows whatever fetter arises dependent on the two. And he knows how an unarisen fetter comes to arise because of lack of mindfulness. And he knows how the abandonment of an arisen fetter comes about. Relax the meninges and smile. And he knows how the non-arising of the abandoned fetter in the future will come about. By right? repeating it again and again and again. So he abides observing mind objects as mind objects internally and externally and both internally and externally. And he abides observing arising phenomena in the mind and the vanishing phenomena in the mind and both arising and vanishing phenomena in the mind objects. And he abides detached, not grasping at anything in the world. And that monks is how a monk abides contemplating mind objects as mind objects in respect of the six internal and external sense bases. Very clear so far? Okay, we are going to the most important part now. The seven factors of enlightenment. Again, monks, a monk abides observing mind objects as mind objects in respect of the seven factors of enlightenment. How does he do so? Here, monks, if the enlightenment factor of mindfulness is present in him, a monk knows that it is present. If the enlightenment factor of mindfulness is absent in him, he knows that it is absent and he knows how the unarisen enlightenment factor of mindfulness comes to arise. How? Yeah. Correct. Be mindful about being mindful. <laughs> it's so simple. Yeah. And he knows how the complete development of the enlightenment factor of mindfulness comes about. How? Huh? Repeat. Keep repeating. Being mindful. What is being mindful first of all? Do you remember? Mindfulness is remembering to observe the mind's movement from one object to another. What is meditation? Observing mind's movement from one object to another. Mindfulness is remembering to observe the mind's movement. So much other difference. I'm observing, observing, observing the breath or I'm observing the sensations. A distracting thought comes. What helps me not go to the distracting thought and stay here? Mindfulness. Mindfulness. I'm staying, 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 staying. What is that? Meditation. Meditation. Got it? <laughs> so the carrying of the bucket of water is meditation. Not letting it spill or preventing it from spilling is mindfulness. Understood? So simple. You are doing it already. 
That's why you keep coming back, you keep coming back, you keep coming back. Yeah, so enlightenment factor of mindfulness means what? When your mindfulness has become very steady, constantly there, constantly there. In an hour you rarely have like 8 or 10 thoughts, you are so constantly mindful. Then your enlightenment factor of mindfulness has developed. Clear? Enlightenment factor of mindfulness. Yeah. Second factor. If the enlightenment factor of investigation of states is present in him, go back up, a monk knows that it is present. If the enlightenment factor of investigation of states is absent in him, he knows that it is absent and he knows how the unarisen enlightenment factor of investigation of states comes to arise. What is investigation of states? I know I am on the object of meditation. I am on quiet mind or I am in, on the breath. I am on the sensations. I am there. I am on my object of meditation. I know. And suddenly I noticed a thought came and the state changed. Yeah. And I recognize, oh, see, I'm getting distracted. I'm going into this thought. Relax, smile, come back. How did this happen? Oh, I lost my mindfulness. Investigation starts inside. Yeah, this investigation of states itself helps bring up insight. How did her insight come up? That with vinyana, I can do it in meditation, but the moment my eyes are open, I have to do it at Vedana. I cannot do it at Vinyana. How did she come up with the insight? Because she was investigating her state of mind. Did you understand investigation? You have to really become a scientist. Yeah, you are actually looking, oh, how I lost my mindfulness. Right now I was here and suddenly I am gone. Ah, I have to be here, stay here, stay here, stay here. Oh, see, dullness is coming. I can see. I'm, I'm feeling very dull. My mindfulness is dimming, dimming, dimming. Yeah? This is investigation of states. I have to increase my energy. Understood investigation of states? Now, what do you understand by? He knows how the unarisen enlightenment factor of investigation of states comes to arise. I bring it up. It's unarisen. It's not there. I'm not investigating anything right now. I am just on my sensations, observing, observing, observing. And I notice that my state is changing. So I brought it up, no? A person who's dull, who's sleepy, lethargic, he goes to sleep, he doesn't even bring it up. So how does it come up? I bring it up. That investigation of state comes up by my interest in my own self, in my own mind. And he knows the complete development of the enlightenment factor of investigation of state comes about. What will be the full development? I repeatedly. You repeatedly use it. What is the full development? What is the proof of full development of investigation of states? What does investigation of states bring about? What did it bring about in her? Insight. So when insights start happening automatically to you again and again and again, then you know it is fully developed. That is the proof for yourself. You were asking, no, how to know progress. There, your answer. You will know by your insight that this enlightenment factor is fully developed in me. You understood insight, right? Coming up with your own knowledge, that which Ekta has not told you, that which you have not read, but which you have experienced. Or maybe Ekta has told you and maybe you have read but 
if you've not experienced it's still not your insight but the moment you experience it and you say ah this is what she meant this becomes lydia's knowledge so that is complete development of investigation of states did you get it huh You are not sitting and creating a long Excel sheet. You just know, oh, I went away and this is a hindrance and I come back. Yeah, and I recognize, oh, my hindrance, I keep thinking about this person again and again. I keep thinking about this person and in a not so nice way. Oh, this person is one of my aversions which I didn't recognize earlier. This is also an insight. sometimes you recognize a particular state suddenly you become aware you yeah, somebody said no today i was not aware of such a thing happening to me and now it happened so many times now i became aware that this particular thing is there in me yeah, it can be fear it can be anything it could be some kind of restlessness it could be ill will it could be anything you suddenly became aware of something yeah so that is the meaning of investigation not analysis not going into creating an excel sheet in your head that becomes too much you should know when you're crossing the line that was the question yeah at some point it becomes a thought yeah not a thought just recognition oh my god it's just a recognition then you move back okay relax smile come back just a recognition that's sufficient that is called investigation of states morris welsh says biku bodhi says discrimination of states just discriminating oh i went away from my object of meditation into some hindrance now i'm back got it recognition herself correct recognition without self talk clear third is if the enlightenment factor of energy is present in him a monk knows that it is present if the enlightenment factor of energy is absent in him he knows that it is absent and he knows how the unarisen enlightenment factor of energy comes to arise how is so it we have a regulator right yes you have a regulator for energy you tell me how did you turn on that regulator yeah how how did you get that push interest by your own interest in yourself and what does that interest also lead to investigation of states automatically you see oh i'm done i have to turn it on so first thing what happened with your interest is you investigated that you are not on the object you are getting dull let me increase the energy and you then you turned on your energy clear yeah so enlightenment factor of energy and he knows how the complete development of the enlightenment factor of energy comes about how entire hour i have been aware i did not lose awareness a thought came and i remember to relax and smile so i didn't go away entire hour i was on my object of meditation whether it was breath or whether it was sensations when an entire hour i have stayed on my object that means energy the enlightenment factor of energy is completely developed get this there are some people who have just one or two thoughts in their entire sitting and yeah, nothing distracts them and in that one or two thoughts also they remember to relax and smile they don't get carried away 
That means the energy is constant. Yeah, high, fully charged. Clear? If the enlightenment factor of delight is present in him, he knows it is present. If the enlightenment factor of delight is absent in him, he knows it is absent. And he knows how the unarisen enlightenment factor of delight comes to arise. How? Same. With interest arises energy, with energy arises delight. Yeah? Bhikkhu Bodhi calls it rapture or joy. It's different in different books, but you should know the names because I read from that book as well as from this book. If you're very sluggish, let's take the example of sluggishness, laziness, sleepiness. Most of you are suffering from that. Yeah. So when the mind is sluggish and lazy, what do you have to do? You have to increase the regulator on energy. I have to focus on. Now, how do I do it? First get interested means first there is actually mindfulness which is helping me recognize oh dullness is coming up, sluggishness is coming up. Yes, this is mindfulness that helps me recognize the investigation of states comes in automatically because of the mindfulness. Now because of investigation of states, I have recognized that I have to increase my energy. So I increase my interest, the energy goes up and when the energy goes up, automatically there is delight. I can stay on my object of meditation. Yes? When do we know or when can we stop from investigation of, by investigation of states, when do we stop from it becoming a thought? Or a no, very clearly when you see, oh, I've got lost in thought. Let me come back to my object of meditation. This was a hindrance or this was sluggishness or this was craving, aversion. Yeah, I've already discriminated, I've come back. You've already done it today. You relaxed and you smiled and you came back to your object. You stop there. You don't start analyzing. Discrimination of states develops slowly. You cannot say, I want to develop discrimination of states right now. It's not going to work like that. You cannot manipulate and bring up insight. Insight comes up. Do you get it? Yeah, so you cannot say, oh, the more I analyze in my head, the more an insight will come. No, wrong understanding. You'll only get lost in thought. That's a distraction. Analysis is a distraction. Otherwise, it would have said analysis of state. No, it doesn't say analysis. Discrimination. To discriminate between right and wrong, good and bad, healthy and unhealthy, wholesome, unwholesome. That's it. Discriminate. He knows how the unarisen enlightenment factor of delight comes to be just by interest. Yeah. And he knows how the complete development of delight, enlightenment factor of delight comes to be. How? What is complete development of enlightenment factor of delight? Bliss. You don't need an external support to make you happy anymore. Yeah? And you're constantly in that state of joy. You don't have to make an effort to smile. You can't but smile. You can't stop the smile anymore. Even if it pains you, you can't stop the smile. You get it? When you're just joyous all the time. This enlightenment factor of delight has been completely developed. Very clear? Okay. If the enlightenment factor of tranquility is present in him, he knows it is present. If it is absent, he knows it is absent. And he knows how the unarisen enlightenment factor of tranquility comes to arise. How? What is tranquility? Tranquility 
is has a pleasantness to it it's not neither pain nor pleasure yeah so recognize the difference between tranquility and equanimity what is equanimity no pain no, no pain, pain no pleasure and tranquility has that pleasantness with it but it is also a calmness get it so tranquility has pleasantness calmness with pleasantness equanimity is calmness with no pain no pleasure yeah and what is the highest samadhi or collectedness it is complete calmness complete collectedness of the mind yeah you see the degrees i didn't go up i went down because it's deep no going deeper and deeper and deeper into the mind calmer and calmer and calmer quieter and quieter and quieter when do you need this these enlightenment factors when you are very restless when your energy is so high what do you need to do you need to bring the energy down how do you bring the energy down you bring up tranquility yeah just bring up tranquility and right now it might sound how do i bring up tranquility you will learn when you learn the jhanas so you bring up tranquility when you are very restless so then the mind becomes a little calm yeah and still very restless then you bring up equanimity that also is a jhana you learn that and then you bring up samadhi or collectedness you don't have to bring it up actually tranquility changes its flavor becomes calmer it becomes equanimity equanimity changes its flavor becomes calmer and more peaceful and it becomes samadhi collectedness it's not something you have to do it happens automatically okay yeah. so if the enlightenment factor of tranquility is present he knows it's present it's absent he knows it's absent he knows how the unarisen enlightenment factor of tranquility comes to arise and he knows how the complete development of the enlightenment factor of tranquility comes about what's the complete development no. samadhi is the complete development when you attain that full collectedness good if the enlightenment factor of collectedness is present in him a monk knows that it is present if the enlightenment factor of collectedness is absent in him he knows that it is absent and he knows how the unarisen enlightenment factor of collectedness comes to arise yeah it simply comes from equanimity yeah. and he knows how the complete development of the enlightenment factor of collectedness comes about right now you won't know just for theoretical purpose you can write the answer there it's called cessation yeah but when you learn samadhi and the jhanas then you will actually understand cessation and the last is enlightenment factor of equanimity if the enlightenment factor of equanimity is present he knows it is present if the enlightenment factor of equanimity is absent he knows it is absent and he knows how the unarisen enlightenment factor of equanimity comes to arise from where equanimity comes from tranquility and he knows how the complete development of the enlightenment factor of equanimity comes about what is the complete development samadhi collectedness simple last paragraph is the same 
So he abides contemplating mind objects as mind objects internally and externally and both internally and externally and he abides detached, not grasping at anything in the world and that monks is how a monk abides contemplating mind objects as mind objects in respect of the seven factors of enlightenment. We'll stop here today.